Hello my friend, it's Pat Sloan here and it is Hello Birdie Day. So here is one of the birds from Hello Birdie and I'm using Bird Song, my fabric line from Benertex. This, and I'm using a basic for the background instead of my bird song background because I ran out and so did a lot of other places. So they're reprinting it and it'll be in, I think sometime later in July, more of that. So here's the pattern. This is a free pattern from Riley Blake. Now I want to tell you there's something special about a bluebird for me. My Nana, which was my mom's mom, my grandma, Nana, she always had her bluebird of happiness. And basically the bluebird of happiness was my grandfather's blue car. <laughs> I'm not sure why she called it that, but she called the blue car. And he, I think he had always had a blue car. So it was a bluebird of happiness. And one of our friends here sent me one day this gorgeous glass bird, which has a backstory. This is a bluebird of happiness. And she also sent me the little poem that goes with it. So here's the bird. I'll read you the poem. This little bluebird, this little bird made of blue has a song in its heart, sweet and true. He spreads sunshine and happiness too. That's the reason he belongs with you. So apparently there was a company that they no longer in business, but they used to make these for years and years and years. And you can probably still buy them on eBay or Etsy or maybe even in a store somewhere. But I am so thrilled to have this. I never knew that those were out there. I would have gotten one for my Nana had they been in business back then. Maybe they were, maybe they weren't. I don't know. Okay. We're going to do just Hello Birdie. I'm shuffling a little bit so that I'm not doing two things at once. We're going to do Hello Birdie for two weeks. I think that's all you need to do Hello Birdie because it really is a very easy project. The first part will be the birds. The second part will be the alternating patchwork block and then sew it up. So we'll do this Monday and then um, next Monday is 4th of July. So we won't have a video then, but on Tuesday we'll do Hello Birdie instead on uh, next Tuesday, the July 5th. And then the following Monday, we'll start with Nature Walk. That way it's a little bit more balanced. And so if you are doing both of them, then it is not, you don't feel rushed. Um, so right now there's just a lot of things starting and there'll be overlap of projects because of course in July starts the Boo Crew, um, ends our, uh, some other projects during that month. So there's always, there's just a lot of things. I know all of you don't do all of them. So you do the ones that, that you like and that speak to you. So we'll do Nature Walk uh, starting the second Monday in July. So we'll just shove that a little bit, which is totally fine. Okay, so let's take a look at the sort of the process and how I thought through this for Hello Birdie. These are so cute, so cute. And there's a few things I wanna to talk to you about with them. So here is mine made with the bird song fabric. And what we're going to do is we're going to walk through here how to do the legs. And I'll show you a little, um, Thing that I like to do when you're working with small pieces that are in repeat is is do a strip set and then sub cut and so we'll do a strip set just for the yellow white yellow and then I want to talk to you here about the fabrics that are used in this quilt this particular pattern it's a free pattern from Riley Blake and when they wrote this they were showcasing a line of background fabrics so when you look at the pattern there's all these different background fabrics I'm just using one one background fabric and then I have several different uh, sh fabrics for the birds. One fabric for the yellow legs and yellow beak. All right, let's first just look at the pattern because it can be a little bit nutty when uh, you go read a new pattern and it's maybe doing something a little bit different. In this case, it is all of these fabrics for the background. So there's all kinds of fabrics listed and I'm gonna pop a picture up right here. So you can look at this picture and see they have different fabrics in the backgrounds for the birds. So you're just going to be cutting uh, from one, if you're doing like me, if you're not doing a scrappy background, you're just gonna be cutting from one background. So that is just a mindset thing when you're reading this, that that's what you have to do. Now you can just look at the pattern and it's pretty easy to follow. They have like numbers and you can just go find the number and then know what to cut. Now I recommend that you do this little bird section. Now let's just scroll in here. 
this little section with the legs to get because these are tiny pieces so instead of working with three tiny pieces let's make one unit and you could even go so far as to make this whole strip set if you wanted and then subcut from it but let's just do this unit here so what I did was I wrote leg 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 where all the leg pieces are on the pattern and then that way you know when I'm reading the pattern whoops let me get them all in here when I'm reading the pattern I know what I'm doing and this is the yellow part of the leg and this is the middle part so these are the two and to find them I basically read the pattern to know what pieces P and H so that's the unit P and H so I just found P and H on here uh, and then what I want to do is cut the middle part which is over here and they have you doing a strips like a like with the fabric you really don't need that much for the legs you probably need like 23 inches 24 inches but to make it easier I'm also just going to do a strip set of I mean a strip cutting the one inch and that will be between the two legs so that white strip between the two legs so I have to have one inch of this fabric and I will just do a little uh, first cut to get rid of sort of all the you know edge that's not totally straight I want to straighten the edge and then do a one inch cut which will be the leg a leg will go on either side of this and I'm not going to need this whole thing but you need about like 22 24 inches so we'll just do the whole strip it'll just be easier now for the legs I need I go on here and the legs are H whoops under the ruler legs are H and I have to cut three-fourths of an inch strip two of them you know one for each leg so I also don't have a straight edge on this yellow that I pulled out see there's a big chunk out here which I probably could have used that one because I don't need the whole strip but I'm going to just um, trim it over here so trim 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 and then I will be doing two cuts that are three-fourths of an inch so I have to so this is a little this is a little small piecing after this it's a breeze everything else is a breeze once you do the legs that's why I highly recommend you do the legs first and then they're done and then you can sew like the wind for everything else okay so what I have is a leg a leg and then the middle and when you put sew all these three together you have this unit here and then you have a unit on either side a rectangle on either side one is longer than the other so you want to be careful and read that and put them in the right on the correct side so like the shorter one is behind the bird and the longer one is in front of the bird uh, so I'm just going to sew these up a second and then we'll subcut them so one leg to the middle section and now press I highly recommend that you if you want accuracy and you don't want the legs like kind of wobbly that you press this first before you add the second strip yellow strip for the other leg which is on the other side now you can press this open or you could press this to the side now Bobby did Bobby sewed these birds for me she's one of our ambassadors and she sewed the birds and pressed the legs open so that is what I'll show you. And I brought along, I brought a wool mat over here. Now these wool mats are really thick, and so I can use it for a short period right on top of my cutting mat. I wouldn't leave it sitting there forever, you know, like the iron sitting there so the heat is pounding down. But for this demo, it's totally fine. So I'm going to press this open, which will uh, evenly distribute that. And I think for these little pieces, a lot of you find great success with that so I will do the whole length of this and then sew the other leg on here so here we go and this is what it's looking like and now I will go ahead and sew the other leg I've sewn the second leg unit on here's the back side so what I have to do is press it and once again I will go ahead and press it open Oop, let me just do it with my fingernail so I will press it open like this the whole way down uh, and then we will subcut or decide whether you're going to add the side so hold on here are the leg unit the leg strip that would be that will subcut 
Uh, here's the back, so I press them open. Now, if you want to, you can cut the two rectangles. Here, let me just show you. You could cut a, a strip set of the longer and the little bit shorter uh, rectangles and then sew those on either side and subcut. Or you can, which I think is easier, um, so if you wanted to do that, it's a lot easier. What you want to do is look at the size, the length, and then just cut the width of fabric or whatever unit you had. I think like 24 inches is about good. Or you can just do, good. with a wider one, I don't really want to waste. I don't mind having a little bit of waste. I'll just throw it in the parts bag. Uh, but for the longer ones, I would want to be a little bit more accurate so that I don't have some, such a big piece of weight left. Unless you're going to use it like for a label or something like that, then you could just put it in your label bin. Okay, but I'm rambling. So if I wanted to... <laughs> <laughs> to cut the strip set to put on either side of this, you're going to look at the pattern and look for the legs, the, the rectangles that go with the legs. So when, you, when you're reading the pattern, whoops, let me get to the numbers here. So you're looking for unit K and unit M. K and M. And you're going to cut a long strip of K and a long strip of M. So I will cut one of them and show you what I mean. So I will cut the sh shorter one, which is three and three fourths. So I would ha be going along here and I will cut three and three fourths. There's three and three fourths the whole way down. And just for you, there we go. So this unit would then be sewn to one side of the leg. Okay, I would open it up, right? Let's do the whole thing so it's not confusing. So you're going to sew this side of the leg, uh, which is the shorter, and it's the back side. So we're, this would be the back side. Then I will cut the other, which is, you'll read the pattern, but it's like four and a fourth. Four and a fourth for here. Okay, and at that point, you'll subcut these strips. Let me just show you subcutting the legs, okay? I'll give you the tips. So the the sub cutting, I'm just going to chop off the end there a little bit. So I want one and three fourths. So I'm doing a one and three fourth leg unit, and that is this. And then you can see here, this is where the leg unit will go. Now, if you do the whole strip set, you would then have the whole thing done. And I think that's the most efficient rather than now having to go and sew a rectangle on either end of this, you would just instead sew your rectangle on either side of this whole unit and then do one and three fourths, one and three fourths, one and three fourths and get all of those little little strip sets across. All right, now the rest of the bird is pretty easy. So this week for Hello Birdie, make as many of the 12 birds as you can. Um, now you can mix up the fabrics. The, let me just point out that it is mostly sew and flip, okay? So let's look at the bird. We're gonna look at the real bird here. You can also look on your diagram. But each of the units, this is a rectangle with a sew and flip beak. This bird wing has a sew and flip here and a sew and flip there. So you're taking a square, sewing and going. Now the neat thing is that very little of this has to match up. You're sort of connecting here and this is coming down to the body, but it's not connecting over there. So it's super, super forgiving. This is a sew and flip. This is a sew and flip. This is a sew and flip and that's a sew and flip and that's a sew and flip. Everything. You're doing no half square triangles. Everything is rectangles and squares. And then you're just sewing across, pressing open and then assembling the bird with his little feet, his cute little feet. All right, that I think is good to get you going for making Hello Birdie. Next week, if you make as many birds you can, so then next week we will do the, um, the patchwork blocks and then you just assemble it. Now, you can decide, where's the pattern? You can decide that maybe you wanna do a smaller one so you could do a three by three blocks where you do um, f uh, five patchworks and then four birds, or you could do five birds and four patchwork, and you could just make it smaller. This is 40 by 40 with really no border or anything on it. Now I did uh, several different fabrics for my birds. Let me just grab that a second. 
to show you the other ones. Hold on. Here are my four colors of birds. So I have the the two with the more um, blue based and then the two that have the blue pattern. And so they're a little bit lighter color bird. And they all have the same wings and the same beak and leg colors. So cute. All right, you are set. You're going to make your birds do as many of the 12 as you can this week. And then you'll finish those birds next week if you don't make them all. So I cannot wait to see your birds. Since I have a few legs there made, <laughs> I think I'm going to make a red bird this week. I think that would be super, super cute. Just one, I think I'll just do one, put a little frame around it. Maybe I'll then hang it on my little stand here uh, where I have the cross stitch right now. I think I'll hang the bird, I'll do a little red bird and put it up there. So for, for next week, I'll probably show you the red bird. Uh, <laughs> okay, I do wanna show a, a sew sampler um, box, one of the sampler boxes that came in that we didn't see yet. And there's another box here already. Somehow this just got stuck on the shelf over there and I forgot about it. So let's look at that real quick. It's always cute things in them. These are subscription boxes from the Fat Quarter Shop. They always have a theme for it and then the items in it. And then behind this card, when you subscribe, you get a discount. And like for this block, the discount was for solids. And so that was really great. Those are great ways to um, extend all of your, your fabrics as you're adding solids. Make believe. What do we have in here? There's always fabric. There's a pattern to use the fabric, which is exclusive to the block. So you don't, you can't get the pattern anyplace else. This little card tells you all the things that are in here. Oh, I see good stuff. Good stuff. What do we have first? Oh, we've got a rotary cutter blade. That's wonderful to try. It's a two pack as well. 45 millimeter, which is the size most of us use. I don't have one here. Um, what else did we get? We had these So Daisy. These are, okay, they're little caps to put on your thread. So here, like for the spool of thread, yeah, so you can put a little cap on there or end on the bottom if you wanted, and then you could store pins and needles inside. That would be great for travel. So if you're taking a spool with you and you want to dump some pins or needles in there, that's so neat. Okay, then what do we have here? This is a Sticky Fingers Multi-Tool. Multi so, oh, neat. Let's just open that. And this, oh, these are, these are great. Whoops. So, so when you're trying to get threads off, you can just sort of take it like this after you've done like some unsewing and get the threads away. This is super cool. Okay, what fabric did we get? What fabric did we get? I see it's Tula Pink Tiny Beasts. This is her brand new line. And it's selling now. There's a pretty cool pattern. Oh, that's a neat pattern that came with it. But I, I love her fabric. I don't use it as much as I'd like to. I don't know why. But let's just see. Let me just crack into here real quick. It's always vibrant and fun. And then she has all kinds of images in there and they work often work across um, lines with each other, you know, so if you get one, then it works with the others. Look how beautiful the tulip. So this, there's a squirrel and acorns. Look at those acorns. Oh my goodness. Here's some uh, raccoons. There's always little animals, flowers. There's an animal in there. I'm not sure what he is. There's ladybugs. I love the ladybugs. Oh my goodness. I will link you to this at my website today and down below. Oh my gosh, the ladybugs are amazing. Okay, so there was a sew sampler box that came out a little bit ago and all the everything but the pattern is, is available. So I'll link you to all of those. Now get ready to sew your little bluebird of happiness, the Hello Birdie, or you might be doing red birds or colorful other birds. <laughs> I can't wait to see. And remember then we'll do Bluebird of Happiness or a Hello Birdie rather next Tuesday because Monday will be 4th of July, which is a holiday in the United States. Uh, and then the following week we'll, we'll start in Nature Walk, which is my panel quilt. I love you. Mwah. Thank you for being here in the Sloan Zone. I will see you online.